is going on guys it's your boy Cesar here bringing us a video here today bring you guys a photoshop to try to get your own cool we're gonna go with simplistic noise abstract black and white whatever the heck video here today um so yeah basically it's like if you guys want the simplistic series right i it's kind of where i put my best sort of really coolest like like really just stylish kind of concepts inside like the word titles like simplistic it's kind of making your like really cool banner in like the most simplest way but then making it very very cool and like really awesome looking and just not having a lot of things going on in the aspect of actually like the, the concept itself right but the whole thing is like having a really cool backing and then just having a nice little title or you know text in your name or whatever and a logo and just makes it look really really cool so Hopefully today you guys will install like like enjoy this video here today. Look how cool this looks. I think it looks pretty badass. Like I'm not even gonna lie to you guys. Like one of my favorites when it comes to the simplistic series. Um. So yeah, I hope you guys do enjoy today's video here today. And I am recording at 12:44 a.m. So hence why the camera is super black and white or not black and white, super just dark. Um. It's because I'm only using my uh my uh screen here. So uh yeah, we're just gonna keep going with it. But let me know if you guys don't want to actually have video webcam if it's like like this and not actually like daytime. I don't know if it matters to you guys, but just let me know, all right? So, anyway, let's go ahead and get this video here going today, and, uh, yeah, see you guys on the other side. Wait, wait, can I do, like, oh, that's not gonna work. I'm, that's too much work. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and get this video here going. So, basically, I'm gonna put this stock here in the description down below. It's basically the stock for a little leaf, uh, I guess a little tropical leaf that I did. If you guys do not want to use a stock, it's all right. You can use any sort of backing sort of for this entire thing, but for me, I kind of want that tropical theme, right? So, I had, like, a leaf like duplicated in like a nice little, you know, in a triangle kind of way. And if you guys want to use the same exact one, I'll have it in the description down below for you guys. Also, I'm going to have this backing here that I'm going to be using in today's video as well to start off because basically this is nothing special. I sort of like this entire concept itself was actually a mistake, uh, like a happy little mistake, right? Because I kind of made a mistake and I was like, eh, let's just go with it and see what happens. And I came up with a really cool concept. So if you guys want to use this stock as well, this backing, otherwise, if you know how to make something like this, just very simply, maybe you'll just like color in with a brush, like something like, uh, Let's just say we just use like any sort of brush really just color it in. But I mean, that's also kind of weird, but I would just say if whatever looks like this, you can use. Otherwise, just download the stock right below in the description down below with also this leaf here as well. That's like before the to like on video kind of thing. So just make sure you guys download that if you guys want to use that. Now, the second thing we're going to be doing in today's video, of course, is making a new layer here. Now, if I need this, I do need that because that's the backing. Let's just call this background as well. Right, so basically what we're going to be doing here today is we're going to be taking this layer here. We're going to be using a brush that looks something like this. Now I'm going to show you guys, of course, an alternative to use. But basically this brush stock little here kind of looks like a nice little sort of Aurora kind of like, uh, just like, just a little light fixture, right? So this is kind of like a way we're going to pull our light in because we're going to have, of course, a two-tone concept. And basically we're going to use the green as the background and the pink is going to like really just pop out in our faces, right? So whatever color scheme you're going to be using here today, make sure that the one you're going to be using for this, I guess highlight feature is going to be the color that you want to pop out the most so if you guys want to have a stock that looks something like this by the way if you guys do if you guys want these stocks i'm actually coming out with this update very 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 soon so if you guys want to purchase the stock brush pack if you guys don't know already you get a whole bunch of brush stocks oh i think it's over like uh estimate like 400 plus stocks uh and that was a weird voice crack uh 400 plus brush stocks so if you guys want to use those you guys can go use those and you also get free updates every time i do update the brush pack and this is going to be in that update so anyway if you guys want to have this kind of brush if you don't have a brush like this what you can do is you can make a new layer you can use the rectangle marquee tool and we're just going to make a nice very simple re rectangle fill it in with that pink that we're going to be using in today's video also if you guys want the background color of this pink it is hex code e059 uh 83 okay so once you press okay Control D to deselect, and then I can just rotate this, right? So with me rotating this, I'm gonna go ahead and just take my eraser, very simply a soft brush eraser, and just erase it like around in a few spots. And we're just gonna make a duplicate of this by holding Alt and then dragging, or clicking on the layer itself and pressing Control J to also make a duplicate if you guys wanna do it that way. However, with this duplicated one, we're just gonna shrink this down a little bit, right? Move it nice and a little closer, maybe overlay it and kind of maybe erase another section of it. And then maybe erase another section like something over here. So based on showing you guys how I kind of made this stock itself, um, besides actually just, you know, using the brush stock itself. But that's the reason why we're going to be making stocks is because we want to use them. But just for the, just in case you guys can't, uh, we're going to control E, basically merge all these layers here together. So click on the first layer of this pink um, rectangle. Uh, click on the last layer by holding shift as well. And you select all the layers in between. Then you can press control E to merge it all together. And what we're going to be doing here is going to filter, blur, motion blur, and then simply just motion blurring it around. So once you kind of have something like this, let's say angle like 50 or so, uh, distance will say 285 pixels, press OK, and then you kind of have the same stock that I just used before. Of course, it's going to be a little different. However, this works as well if you guys want to, you can erase around a little bit more, like if you want to like have it a little more, 
I guess abstract, right? So this works for this exact exact purpose. This is how I actually made the sock as well. But I'm gonna be using the sock. So that's kind of how you're gonna start this. And we're gonna go ahead and just click a couple times. And uh, this little color that we're doing here is actually the color that's gonna be popping out the most. So make sure that you guys know what your color scheme is, and also make sure that this highlight color that you're gonna be choosing is the one that's gonna be able to be popped out the most. If you don't want this color to pop the most, make sure it's not this color, right? Or whatever color that you chose. If you, if you have like a blue in the background and like a yellow, make sure you guys know that that yellow highlight is gonna be what's gonna be popping out the most. So my green is gonna be back there, but also my pink is gonna be just really out there, right? So just make sure you guys know that. Um, so basically what you're gonna have to do is, once you have these little like layers done, basically this is one layer right now, right? Of course this background layer I have as well, I'll just tell you guys this hex code as well. The background layer color is called, or excuse me, hex code 141618. We're gonna press OK. And we're gonna also just shift click on all these layers here, press Control J to make a duplicate, Control E to merge them all together, and we're gonna go to Filter, Filter Gallery, and we're gonna go ahead and just go to Fill Grain. Um, so film grain is the one that I use that it's like sort of like a noise texture, right? Which makes this look really freaking cool, honestly, if you guys kind of work with it a little bit. And the grain level is at 7, the highlight area is at 0, and your intensity is at 9. So I'm going to press OK. And then right away, you kind of have this really weird sort of abstract look to it, right? Now, definitely just guarantee you guys, if you guys don't see enough highlights, you can go back into it, put more highlights in. But for me, I'm just going to go ahead and say, this is fine. This works for me. But uh, like I said, right, that pink is just popping out a lot. So whatever color you have for your highlight, make sure it just has a nice pop out feeling. And this is where we're going to actually use this stock here, right? We're going to go ahead and just use this stock here. I'm going to go ahead as well. And we're gonna just merge this two the two like things together. But if you guys don't know already, if you guys don't know how to get rid of a clipping mask or like a I guess a uh, layer mask, I don't know how myself. But if there's any other way to doing it, what I usually just do is end up literally just clicking like this, making a new layer, clicking Control, and then selecting this layer as well, which will select both the layers, and then pressing Control E. But uh, if you I don't know if you guys need to do that. I, I don't know. Maybe I'll just have it just, just in like this form, so you guys don't have to do that. But I'm gonna just make this pure black. We're gonna rotate this on an angle. And we're going to simply duplicate it by holding Alt and dragging it over. Control T to free transform. Right click, flip horizontal, and then have something like this, right? And I thought this was pretty cool, honestly. Let's see, uh, let's say right about there, right? Kind of a little, little V-shaped sort of like floral thingy kind of thing. Um, so basically, Control E, merge the two, two things together, and we have nice one little simple uh, like leaf stock. Um, so basically now, I'm going to go ahead and just shrink this down just a little bit, and we're just going to flutter this around the banner design, right? So just you can just hold Alt, and you can just drag around. Right, so I'm gonna put one like over here. If you want to choose different sizes, you can, but I really don't feel like it's necessary. I'm just gonna move around, just like so, and I kind of have like this. I think it fills enough space. Um, maybe like that fills a lot more space. Maybe something like this would be like here. Maybe like another one down here. Right, just like have it fill the space, like flutter around. And once you have that, you can merge all these two, uh, all these things in into a group if you guys wish to, or making just a layer. I'm gonna just make a copy just in case. Um, make a nice little layer, right? And then just lower your opacity down. And we're gonna lower it down to, I'll say about 30% opacity. Right, very simple. You can see the like, little, like little tropical leaves, it's like stock, whatever. If you guys want something different in the background, just know that you guys can. If you guys wanna have some sort of like character, I guess sort of stamp kind of a thing, like stamp PNG, or maybe wanna have like different like, I guess variety of guns, like a vector of guns in the background. If you wanna do like a Call of Duty banner or something like that, just know that you're, this is like the way you're kind of like working through theme a little more, right? So if you wanna have like a cool theme banner, if it's tropical, it's you can use leaves. If it's not tropical, use something that kind of maybe works in like a really cool stamp setting, right? Where kind of like you can duplicate it around, to sort of get that vibe in that direction, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and just make a duplicate of this as well again, this like entire thing. Shrink it down a little bit. And I'm just gonna make simple little flutter, like flutters around where it's kind of empty. And we're gonna lower this down, like this opacity down very, very heavy. Let's say, merge it all together. And I'm gonna lower this opacity like pretty low, but also enough to at least fill the space. You can see in the background very, very slightly, as you can see, right? And it kind of works, kind of helps fill that banner. But right now what you have is a really good start to this exact uh, cool little abstract banner design. I don't know what the heck we're gonna call it yet. Um, so basically, I'm gonna go ahead and just use the exact same color corrections that I used before. So the first thing that's coming up right now after this little leaf texture is the color balance. Now the color balance code for this one is negative 34. If you guys are using my colors, of course, but if you guys wanna mess around with this, this is where you would mess around. You just kind of like mess around and see what colors look really good. You can mess around with this angle as well to get purples, greens, more yellows, more blues. Uh, you can get some really really cool colors with color balance. So but for me, I went negative 34 Negative 34 again and then five right so it kind of gave me a really cool bluish pink tone Which looks really really good for this and it will only get more and more enhanced when I put on more color corrections Which actually I'm gonna put on some lights really quickly as well. So 
I'm going to go ahead and use a nice soft brush. We're going to take this little pink here. Get a nice dullish pink. And we're going to click around a couple times around the banner design and give us a nice little color. So with a soft brush, select the color if you want to use, like, like I just did before. I used Alt. I dragged around until I found like a nice little nullish or excuse me, dullish kind of pink. I chose that as my color and I clicked around a couple times. Very simply like three little clicks and like a triangle formation. We're gonna go to normal. We're gonna change it to linear dodge add, lower the opacity down. Now at this moment, if for whatever reason, your color that you chose was just not that great. Once you lower your opacity about 35%, I say, you can go ahead, right? And you can just press control U on top of that layer and it'll give you the option to bring up your hue and saturation where you can actually change your color around I kind of find which colors maybe work better. You can lower your lightness as well, which kind of like works as like a, another overlay in this case, exactly. Um, so I'm gonna just leave it on zero them because I think I like the color. Let's leave that on zero. And we'll just maybe tone this a little bit more to like a purple and then we'll press okay. So negative 17 for me was like a purplish tone, right? So I'm gonna do that. And I'm gonna do one more light for a blue. We'll say like this one right here. And we'll just click another couple times in like opposite you know places that we clicked before. Around there. Linear dodge add again, lower the opacity down, and I think that blue pretty much works, right? I get more greenish tones. There we go. Let's press OK. So basically, very, very simple light effects. Very, very just like kind of just brings out some, I guess, different directions. They actually put more, uh, I guess, color corrections on it. So after these lights, we're going to add a brightness and contrast. So brightness and contrast. Now for my brightness and contrast, I went ahead and went with negative 46 brightness. And nine, I believe, 91, 91 contrast, excuse me, negative 46, and then 91 contrast, very heavy, as you can see, right? And automatically you start seeing that color that we had as a highlight color just pop out a lot more, the green gets more dulled, and also our leaves are kind of popping in a little more as well. So if you need to go back and lower the tones of the opacity in your leaves, something like that, you can go ahead and definitely do so. Um, at this very moment in time though, you have to go all the way back to like something like this and then add more, let's just say if I want to do it for just an example, if I want to add more highlights, this is exactly where I would do it. Let me make sure I get that sort of pinkish tone. We're just going to take a guess because I didn't save the actual hex. All right, let's just say like that's okay. If I want to get more highlights, then I would just of course make another copy of the exact or three little uh, bottom, how do you call them, backgrounds, filter gallery. Go back to fill and grain, press OK, and then I can get more highlights like that. Of course, my highlight are a little more purple, but that's just in, just so you guys know, right? And also, this might be another way to actually put another color like tone in there. I didn't even think about it like that. But for now, we're just going to leave it as it was and just make sure you guys know that there's always room to go back and there's always room to fix. However, for the tutorial purposes, we're just going to keep going, right? So, okay, after brightness and contrast, I put a vibrance in. Now, the vibrance was at 12, negative 12, excuse me. Negative 12, 33 for the saturation and vibrance. Now, as you can see, it just pulls out my highlight color even more and kind of like just kind of pulls out our colors a lot more, right? So you can start seeing that green a little more, a little better, right? And not so dulled out. So that's what kind of going on with this, with the vibrance. And we're gonna also put in another color balance right now as well. Now, uh, let's put in the color balance. And my, for me, I think it was at negative 56, uh, negative 52, and then negative 13. And basically what this did is we're going to fix this a little bit because my colors are just a little bit different around about around there. So you can see we're just kind of getting that still that blue and pink tone, but as well as just kind of like making everything just keep popping out more and more and more. It's kind of like a layer process and it's really, really freaking cool. And of course, you guys see the end result. and It's really, really dope. So we're going to go ahead and after this color balance, we're going to add in our little square light. I'm going to call it right. So we're going to make a new layer. We are going to use let's just use. Let's just use this square, right? And I'm gonna click in the middle, just like so. Hold Alt and Shift, and then simply just make a nice big, big square. So if you hold Alt and Shift, you guys did not know, if you find the middle with your rulers, very simply just sort of click on your rulers, Control R to bring them up. And if you click on them and sort of drag around where you think the middle is, you'll feel a little snap. As you can see, my mouse will sort of snap or just jump to the middle, as you can see. That's really how you know the exact where the middle is, and you can do the same exact thing with a horizontal line coming from up here, down here. Oops, oops. Down here, right? So once you find the middle, you click in the middle, you hold Alt, of course, that's where you ha how you actually allow your mouse to stay in the same exact orientation while you're making any shape. And then holding Shift will make that shape perfect, right? So once I have this, I'm gonna go ahead and just, uh, where's this little pinky tone we got going on? I think it's like around something like this. We'll just go for that right now. Right, so once you make this little like, like some rectangle as big as the canvas as it can go, we're gonna make this a little more bigger. And we're also gonna make sure we rotate it 45 degrees. So if you hold shift while you have free transform up, you actually will uh, rotate in 15 degree intervals, which makes sure that you will get to 45 degrees in very, very simply three turns, right? Press OK. And what we're going to do is we're going to lower this. Actually, we may have to do, well, we'll just lower our fill to 30%. 
right? Throw off at a 30%. We're going to take our eraser. We're just going to erase a couple spots just like so, right? This is just a nice little light to have in there. Uh, do I, should I just put this on? Uh, we'll just leave it on that for now. But I know I had an uh, inner glow on this, right? So I'm going to put an inner glow on this. I'm going to also make this inner glow pink as well. And then we're going to just press OK. And then this is where you probably want to just race a little more. So I'm going to race like a little something over here. Just very simply races because no matter what, as long as you don't race the head, like the edges, all the edges very harshly, you'll see the nice little, very cool little sort of rectangle like like light glow, right? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna basically control J, control T to free transform, shrink down this rectangle again, and we're gonna make this other rectangle uh same exact orientation, I would say, honestly. If we want to make it a little more bigger, maybe. But this inner rectangle is actually gonna be a different color for the inner glow. We're gonna go with a blue. All right, press OK, press OK again. And that would just sort of add a little more sort of, I guess, light fixtures to our, I said light fixtures. I've been watching a lot of like house things. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't mean to say light fixtures. What is that show called? Oh God, it's like where they design houses. Anyway, regardless, um, look, <laughs> we're gonna lower our fill down a little more just so I can get the actual see-through ability. And uh, maybe I'll lower this opacity down just a little bit, right? Mess around just a little bit, and I think that's pretty good. So after our little lights, we're gonna go ahead and add in a black and white, excuse me, a black curve, right? So with the new layer, we're gonna take our pen tool, which is of course the shortcut P on your keyboard, not to P, but to click P. Um, so basically, I'm gonna go ahead and just click around to the top left of this uh, banner design, drag around to the left, like mm, around here, okay? Right, so very simple, nice little curve. So if you guys don't know how to do that again, I'll do it one more time. I'm going to click, also, where did I put mine? I put mine a little further up. So I'm going to click around further up over here, and we're going to click and drag. We're going to have a nice little anchor points here. You can hold control, select your little extended points for your anchors right here, right? And we're just going to move them a little bit, and we're just going to give a nice little curve. Once you have the curve you're sort of looking for, you can simply, you can hold alt, select on that anchor point that you just created on. It'll actually get rid of this little weird curve, so you can go around very easily. You don't actually need to do so, but if you guys want to, you can hold alt, click it, and it'll get rid of that weird curve that's happening. And you can just go all the way around, go all the way around on the opposite side of the inside, or excuse me, the opposite, let's just go on the outside of the banner, right? So you can connect it, and we're gonna first fill this in with black. We're gonna right click, delete the path, and we're going to change our blend mode from normal to color. And this will make this black and white for us. And it looks really, really cool, really good. And this is also where I'm going to add in the really cool, simple, sort of like, I call it the indention effect. But what it is, is kind of like a separation. In a way, it's just like a drop shadow in a way as well, right? But it looks really, really cool once it's used in a very cool, in a kind of a really cool setting, right? So I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to hold control and select the thumbnail of this little sort of curved rectangle, whatever you want to call it, the black and white shape in our actual banner design. And we're going to just click hold control. And click on it and it's going to give us a very simple selection mask which is going to basically mask off the exact thing we just pen tooled out but what we're going to be doing is we're going to make a new layer and we're going to take our brush right we're going to take it and make it a soft brush zero hardness that means a pretty fair size i'll say uh what size is this around 1000 make your foreground color black right so we're going to click our nice black soft brush and just simply Click it around a couple times and drag just like so. Once you have that little bit of a drag, you can see this little drop shadow is happening right here. If I press Control D, you'll be able to see a little more. But what we're gonna be doing is not using it for this exact little drop shadow here. Even though this does look cool, we're gonna take it right. We're gonna move it down, and we're just gonna also duplicate it. If we can make it a little more bigger as well, duplicate it and just give ourselves really cool, simple little. Uh, I would just call them like indentions, right? Just like so. Maybe I'll move this one a little closer to this one or further. Maybe move this one closer. Then it looks pretty good. Let me put in the, uh, let's put in the word simple, right? That's what we had before. Put in the word simple in here, right? I'll make this full white so you can see it just like so. Now, once you have this little word here in the middle, I'll just make it. Also, if you guys do not actually know how to make it, so it kind of like, let's push this all the way to the top. If you guys don't know how to make it so it separates and makes it a very, very big space in between each letter, if you use this, right, table right here, now if you don't have your character table up, you can simply bring it up by just holding, excuse me, once you click on the actual text, you press Control A, and if you press Control T on your keyboard, it'll automatically bring up the character. So once you select all the, I guess, letters in the actual, uh, whatever you just typed out, right, and you press Control T, you'll get this little characters tab here, and this VA right here is how you actually separate the letters in between. So if you wanna make, of course, closer, I believe 100%, excuse me, I believe 100%, or excuse me, I think, is it 100 to zero? I think zero is actually where it should be, but I'm gonna go ahead and just simply drag it and move it and just make it nice and, uh, 
extended, just like so. I'm going to press OK. And I'm just going to take my logo, put it in the exact same spot as before. Move this down a little bit more. And I'm going to take one of these letters for like stylistic purposes and just make them pink, right? Just like so. Make it pink, just because it looks cool. All right, cool. So I'm like right now, I'm not feeling what's happening on the inside here. It might be a little bit too much. So I'm going to actually erase some of this pink like glow here. Now you can do that, right? Just like so, right? Now it looks way better in my opinion. So now you have this really cool theme so far. And basically, we're almost done here. I'm going to go ahead and just tell you guys after this, we're going to go ahead and do a very cool little photo filter plug in here. Take a photo filter. So if you guys know what this is, kind of like putting a sheet of color over the entire banner design besides just like only one color though. No sort of mixing in the way like color balance does. So you take this photo filter. I'm going to make mine purple because as you can see here, I'll go through all the colors really quick, like very slowly. But for me, when I see this orange, this yellow does not look very good. This kind of like orange, also this yellow also dulls out my pink color. I don't want that to happen. The red looks okay, but it just makes this pull out too much. But for me, purple, the overlay on purple looks really good. And I think this is like the purple I'm going to be using right here. Press OK. And then what you can do is simply just leave that as so. But you can see it puts a nice little very simple soft color on top of everything. If you also look in the black and white we have here, this no longer is like basically black and white. It has a little bit of a hue on it as well. And looks really, really, really good. So once we've done that, we can go ahead and put in, let's go ahead and put in, let's uh, put in levels, I think. We'll put in the levels. Now for levels, it's very, very difficult to like kind of mess around and switch around with, but this is sort of a way of using brightness and contrast for like men, I guess you would say. Um, but no, it's not used for that purpose. It's more used for, I guess, photo editing and stuff like that. For me, I would. that's how I kind of learned about it. But I use it very, very simply and very like, sort of just move around very, very small things. If you see, this is, makes everything really dark. This middle one's kind of like an, kind of like an exposure as well, or brightness, I would say. And this last one over here is sort of like messing around with like the, uh, uh, how do you call them? Like the highlights and such, right? So you can see kind of messing around with the pinks and stuff like that. So if you want to move this around, you should, because it kind of just make it look, I guess, in a way to bring out most of the colors while also keeping that really cool dark scheme while also not really making it distorted. So if something like this, right, is not very good because it just, it's way too distorted. So you make sure move that back over there, right? Sort of moving this around a little bit move this around a little bit, but I have settings, of course, right? So make sure you just do very, very minuscule things. But for my settings, I actually ended up having nine for my level, 0.86 for the middle here. Now it might not look perfectly good because I might have a different color scheme than before, but if I put this on 277, we're gonna go ahead, oh, 277. I think it was 255 and I was just tripping. Oh no, it was 227, wasn't it? I think I wrote it down wrong. There we go. Right, nice, very, very cool, dark scheme to it. Looks really, really dope, and I'm very happy with this looks, uh, how this looks, excuse me. And we're pretty much done, but I did a little bit of a little secret, right? What I ended up doing was, I'm gonna do this for you guys really quick. I'm gonna make a new layer. We're gonna press M on our keyboard, and we're gonna find our edges, right? These are our edges. So if you guys know, you can just click with your marquee tool, and you can click and drag across the entire sort of canvas, right? So once you've kind of done this, if you guys wanna do this, you can right click, free transform, or transform selection, excuse me, uh, I already did it. I'm gonna hold Alt and Shift, shrink this down a little bit, right? So you kind of get this little border look to it, right? Now it's not gonna be using the filter, or excuse me, the selection modify border because that is not gonna give you the hard edges that we're looking for, unless you change the feather and stuff like that. But that's just we can, this is kind of the same exact speed. I want to kind of get make sure I have the same sort of, I guess, uh, distance between the top and bottom and this the also the uh, right and left of it. So we're gonna go ahead. Once you've done that, just check it, right? We're gonna right click, select the inverse. So what's gonna happen is it's gonna select the, sort of the border, like I said before, and we're gonna just click quickly, simply just fill this in with any color because it really doesn't matter. I don't know why I just was gonna switch it to black, but it does not really matter, right? Once you switch to any color, this is gonna use as a template. So what we're gonna do is we are going to take everything below this image that you just made just now. So this is gonna be on the top of everything, right? Take everything below it, including the color correction, including the background. So hold shift, click on everything, control J to make a duplicate of it and then control E to merge it all together. And what's gonna happen here is you're gonna have a full sort of image of the entire sort of thing that you just created, right? Now, if you want to, if you don't want everything on the outsides here for whatever reason, you can basically hover over everything again, right click, layer via copy, and then this bottom layer is gonna be what's gonna be around it. And this is the only layer that's gonna have just that inside part right here. And this layer here is gonna have everything on the outside. You can go ahead and delete that if you guys wish to, but that's just if you guys have really cared about it, right? So with this right here, what we're going to do is we're going to hold control on that little template that we, template that we just made, right? So, of course, it's going to control click on this and it's also going to give us a nice little marquee sort of selection around where we just made this little template. Hold control, click on that thumb uh, thumbnail, right? They're going to have this little selection here. Go back and click on your layer that you just made a duplicate of. Right click with the marquee tool 
and do layer via cut or copy. It doesn't really matter what whatsoever. Whichever one you did, just make sure you guys hide this layer here. And once you have done that, you're gonna have this little layer here, but you're only gonna see it's gonna be like a very simple sort of small little border of it. What we're gonna do is press Control T, free transform it, and then flip it horizontal. And then very simply, what you can do is you can find little spots in your areas where something like this right here, right? If I were to go in with my eraser, now if you guys want to, I would probably highly suggest you guys doing uh, the layer mask for this. That way you can use your black brush or, excuse me, black brush to erase and white to sort of fill in. Or if you use a black eraser, you to fill in, you know, black eraser to erase and then white eraser to fill in. It, it really doesn't matter. Basically, once the black and white switches, that's how it switches for the uh, eraser and the brush. But for now, take the brush change it to a black brush for us to erase it on make sure we're selected on the actual mask and then you can just basically go in you can find little spots like something like this right and where you can have it make it look like it's sort of bleeding through like a third dimension in a way right and you can see this over here i'll erase it over there a little bit kind of looks really really cool if you take your time about it like this right here kind of looks like it's breaking through the banner design but this is actually a border around the actual banner design it looks really freaking cool i highly suggest you guys to do this <clears throat> excuse me right here right here it looks like it's breaking through again right this over here looks like it's breaking through a little bit, right? I'll go around this entire thing, actually, because I think it looks pretty cool. But uh, if you sort of find little different spots, I would definitely take a lot more time on this. But that's basically that little secret little hint that I did in the actual example. But basically, I think we're pretty much done. And I think it looks really really freaking good to my original and i love that i love the fact that i can do that so sometimes i make a video and i sort of get this like really weird concept at the end where it's just like it's not that close to the like the preview but this is pretty freaking close now i want to thank you guys very very much for watching this entire video i would love to see you guys how you guys create it and make stuff on twitter tweet it at me and then sort of just like be like yo opinions maybe i'll retweet it maybe i won't who knows or give your own version about this like mine is more tropical theme right with all the tropical theme uh, tropical trees behind it or leaves excuse me but uh yeah homie it's 1 14 a.m if you couldn't tell i was probably a little off but uh your homie went through it right so uh, yeah of course 200 likes on the video equals a secret down below and uh, also just let me know in the comments below if you guys made it this far should we just keep the webcam for videos like this where it's like really late or do you guys care for like the weird sort of i guess brightness about this uh, webcam just gotta let me know we're, gonna, we're working with it right so uh anyway yeah thank you guys very much for watching i'll talk to you guys later so, so hq out don't forget to keep smiling stay positive and stay freaking productive guys later good night for me at least <laughs> morning for you guys yeah whatever all right cool